Okay, this is the uh, video tutorial now for your uh, independent study topic, which is uh, adaptations for nutrition. Um, when watching this video, you need to have the booklet that I've given you with you, the front page of which is uh, on the PowerPoint slide. Um, so each uh, slide of the PowerPoint relates to a particular page in that booklet so you need to uh, fill out um, the various uh, tables and uh, blank spaces with the uh, answers as we go through this video uh, so the slide number is down the bottom there so slide one is just the title slide uh, slide two we'll come on to in a moment so that's the page that you need to be on um, now is uh, to do with um, slide two okay so this is um, slide two and uh, the first thing we need to understand is the uh, definition of nutrition uh, so that's written there uh, you need to copy that uh, into your uh, answer booklets um, basically nutrition is just the way <clears throat> all organisms obtain the raw materials from which they build up organic compounds from inorganic ones okay so some example of inorganic uh, compounds would be things like nitrate co2 uh, we'll discuss those later um, but um, these raw materials that are taken up uh, or taken in by organisms are known as nutrients. Okay, so that's the definition of uh, nutrition. And secondly, there are two main modes of nutrition. Uh, on the left here is uh, autotrophic uh, nutrition okay and on the right is uh, heterotrophic uh, nutrition now we're going to start with autotrophic nutrition <clears throat> shortly when we go on to uh, slide three um, but if i just mention a little bit about heterotrophic um, these are the four types uh, that we we'll look at now we're going to look at saprophytic feeders in this uh, video uh, and we're going to look at holozoic feeders in this video. Uh, parasitic and symbiotic feeders will be dealt with um, again. Uh, so I'm just going to give an overview of uh, holozoic feeders and saprophytic feeders in this video. Okay, um, autotrophic nutrition then. Um, this is to do with photosynthesis, uh, which plants... Uh, undertake and this other one here called chemosynthesis which uh, a lot of bacteria um, carry out so we need to go in now to slide uh, three and uh, define what an autotroph is and look at some other features of autotrophic nutrition Okay, so um, an autotroph then uh, is an organism that can manufacture its own organic compounds from inorganic ones. Okay, uh, auto meaning self, of course, and trough uh, meaning feeding. Uh, so these are often known as self feeders. Now, um, on the previous slide, uh, I said that um, autotrophs can do photosynthesis or chemosynthesis okay they are the names of the reactions that uh, those organisms carry out um, but we need to classify an autotroph now based on the energy source that they use for their nutrition so with uh, photosynthesis which is the reaction carried out by plants um, they are known as uh, photoautotrophs because photo means light so they actually use the energy and light um, to make their organic compounds from inorganic ones as we've said there 
Okay, so there's the uh, description of a photo auto trough, which you need to make a note of. And there's obviously the name of the reaction that these organisms carry out. Okay, with a chemo auto trough, then, um, chemo means chemical. So uh, these organisms, which are typically bacteria, uh, they use the energy derived from chemical reactions that they carry out um, involving organic compounds. Okay, so we'll look at the chemoautotroph second uh, in detail, uh, but you do need to make a note of that description of a chemoautotroph. And again, down there, that's the name of the reaction that these organisms carry out. So, uh, on the next slide now, we're going to go into detail about a, uh, a photoautotroph uh, and exactly how um, plants uh, synthesise organic molecules from inorganic ones. Okay, so this is slide four, um, and we're going to look at uh, photoautotrophic uh, nutrition. So, firstly, um, I've told you that it's uh, photosynthesis is the name of the reaction that photoautotrophs use to actually make organic molecules from inorganic ones uh, using light as an energy source. So the first thing we need to know is the uh, balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. So we're going to start with the reactants, which are going to be inorganic. OK, so there's carbon dioxide. Um, it also needs water, which is inorganic. That then will synthesize glucose, C6H12O6. And then you'd get another product, uh, which is oxygen. OK, so these two are inorganic. And obviously the glucose there is organic because uh, it contains complex uh, carbon. Okay, for the reaction to take place, you need light, uh, and of course, you need chlorophyll as well. Okay, so there's the chemical reaction. Uh, we need to balance it now. Um, so it's six CO2, six water, and then it's six oxygen. Okay, so there's the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so um, how does uh, the plant obtain its uh, inorganic uh, molecules? Well, water, of course, uh, is going to come from uh, the roots. So this is an example of roots uh, within a plant. Um, the plant will also absorb other uh, inorganic molecules uh, through its roots. Um, as well as making glucose, the plant will want to make things like proteins and fats. So other things that are absorbed by the roots that are inorganic would be things like uh, nitrates. Now the plant will need nitrates, which is inorganic, uh, to make amino acids, which are organic. Okay, so if you remember... The amino acid, uh, it's got a central carbon with an R group and a H, carboxyl group there to the uh, right, and then it'll have NH2, which is the amino group. And that's what that nitrate will be needed for uh, to make that um, uh, amino acid. Okay, so there's the roots. Um, the other thing, of course, is the carbon dioxide. Now, the carbon dioxide is going to enter the leaf through these structures, which is known as uh, stomata. Okay, the little holes on the underside of the leaf that allow oxygen in, and it also allows oxygen out as well. So um, carbon dioxide will enter the leaf via the stomata, and within the leaf then, uh, one of the main cells 
that undertakes photosynthesis is known as a palisade uh, mesophyll uh, cell okay so once the water and the co2 enter that cell uh, it'll then uh, carry out photosynthesis uh, to make glucose um, and also other things as well that the plant needs. So that is uh, photo autotrophic nutrition, okay, with regards uh, to green plants. Uh, we're going to have a quick look now at uh, chemo autotrophic nutrition. Okay, slide five. Uh, chemo autotrophic nutrition. So there's um, numerous examples uh, of this. Um, I've just decided to pick on two bacteriums um, because they are ones that you will look at if you carry on to a two. Um, on the left is called uh, rhizobium and on the right is nitrifying bacteria. Uh, that's just a general term for two uh, bacteria known as uh, Nitrobacter and Nitrosomonas. Okay, so it's like a, a family of bacteria, um, that word means. Okay, so what do these uh, organisms do? Well, they carry out uh, chemical reactions that allow them to um, ultimately make uh, organic uh, compounds. Now rhizobium um, is a bacterium found in plants called legumes. Okay, these include uh, things like clover which you find in uh, fields. Um, other legumes will be the pea plant as well. So um, this rhizobium actually lives uh, in the roots. Okay, so that's a little legume plant there. These are the roots uh, underneath. And uh, on the roots there are uh, swellings known as root nodules. And uh, this is where the rhizobium uh, live. And uh, they roll uh, or one of their roles uh, is to carry out nitrogen fixation. Okay, nitrogen fixation. Now what that involves is uh, using nitrogen uh, gas from the atmosphere um, and using an enzyme uh, known as nitrogenase Uh, it can uh, react that nitrogen with hydrogen uh, to give uh, ammonium ions. Okay, so this reaction here uh, is a way in which the bacterium synthesizes different inorganic molecules, so that's ammonium ions, and Via other reactions, it can then use that ammonium um, ion plus charge there uh, to make organic molecules such as uh, proteins. Okay, so that's just a simple uh, example of one reaction occurring in the rhizobium that will allow it to actually. Um, ultimately to make organic molecules. Uh, this reaction actually does require energy uh, in the form of ATP as well. Okay, so you need hydrogen coming in and the energy from ATP as well. And then you get your ammonium ions. So that's one simple example there of rhizobium. Now, uh, nitrifying bacteria, uh, these live in the soil, okay, and depending on the bacterium depends on the type of reaction that uh, is carried out. Um, but one reaction would be uh, to take ammonium ions and convert them into 
nitrite, which is NO2. Um, this reaction actually produces ATP, okay, which the uh, bacteria can use, again, to help them synthesize organic uh, molecules. Uh, the next reaction would be to convert NO2 uh, to nitrite trait which is NO3 uh, again that uh, reaction produces energy ATP so just two simple examples of chemosynthesis whereby you are um, carrying out chemical reactions uh, either to produce energy here and inorganic molecules that will then allow the bacteria to uh, synthesize organic uh, molecules as well. Okay, so that's really all you need to know about chemoautotrophic nutrition. Um, and the next slide now will be looking at um, heterotrophs, which is a totally different type of nutrition. Okay, this is uh, slide six then, uh, looking at heterotrophic uh, nutrition. Um, as I outlined earlier, um, there are a number of different types of heterotrophic uh, nutrition. Um, the first one, your holozoic feeders, uh, we're going to look at in a moment. Then we're going to look at um, <clears throat> saprophytic uh, nutrition um, as well. Uh, the parasitic nutrition and the symbiotic, uh, mutualistic nutrition uh, we'll do in detail um, again. So, <clears throat> a couple of definitions first. Um, you need to know what um, heterotrophic nutrition uh, means, uh, first off. So, if I dictate this, you need to make uh, a note of it in the uh, question booklet. Um, so, it's a method of nutrition in which uh, an organism gains its nutrients from complex organic molecules. Now, that if um, so, that's quite a broad. Uh, definition um, of heterotrophic nutrition. Um, there are, of course, slight variations uh, in which uh, organisms carry out heterotrophic nutrition. And uh, that's what we're going to look at now with these uh, pictures. Um, so, the pictures relate to uh, holozoic feeders. And um, a holozoic feeder is a type of heterotroph, okay, but specifically a holozoic feeder is uh, a type of nutrition that happens in animals, okay. So you can see in these pictures that they're, they're all uh, animals, okay, and what holozoic uh, feeders or holozoic nutrition involves um, is number one, the ingestion of food. That food is then digested into small soluble molecules. Those small soluble molecules are absorbed uh, and then they are assimilated, uh, which means that the, the organism uses the absorbed nutrients to make various structures that... Um, the animal's body needs. Um, all of those processes I've just outlined will be covered when we do the human digestive system, but that's the basis of what uh, holozoic uh, feeders uh, do. Now, um, we can classify holozoic feeders um, into different groups depending on the uh, organic food that they eat. Okay, so if we look at um, the cow uh, to start with here, 
Um, this is a herbivore. Okay, so a herbivore uh, is something that will eat plant material. Okay, so a cow is a herbivore. So that is a specific type of holozoic feeder because a cow will ingest plant material, which is uh, organic. Now, the thing with a cow is it's a particular type of herbivore known as a ruminant. Now, these ruminants um, are an example also of symbiotic nutrition. Okay, so the cow and the ruminant is something we're going to look at in detail um, again, not part of this independent study. The other animal here uh, is a rabbit. That's also a herbivore, uh, but it isn't a ruminant. Okay, so its digestive system is uh, a bit different to that of the cow. But nonetheless, it's still a holozoic uh, feeder. Now, this one here is the tiger. Now, this is a carnivore. Okay, and carnivores obviously are meat uh, eaters. Okay, the pig here is an omnivore. Okay, and an omnivore will eat both plants and animals. Okay, uh, the bear is also uh, an omnivore as well, as are humans. Okay, we have the ability to eat both plant and animal uh, material. Uh, carnivore, a bit of right there, we'll eat uh, meat. Okay, so herbivore, omnivore, carnivore uh, are all um, types of holozoic feeders because they ingest organic material um, and they are, of course, uh, heterotrophs as well. Now, there's two other organisms on this slide. We've got the earthworm here and we've got a woodlouse uh, there. Now, these organisms have a different type um, of holozoic uh, feeding. Okay, these are known as detritivores. Okay, both of them. Okay, now a detritivore uh, is an animal again, uh, but it feeds on pieces of dead or decaying uh, plant and animal tissue. Um, that dead, decaying plant and animal tissue is known as detritus. Okay. All right. So these are uh, these organisms are really important in sort of recycling material, uh, particularly in soil. Um, so if we have a look at uh, what the uh, detritivores do. Um, here on the left hand side is dead decaying um, branches. On the right we've got dead and decaying leaves. So detritivores then will turn all of that substance into detritus which is what you can see there. Now these detritivores are important because they actually aid in the digestion of um, plant material by decomposers. Okay, what they do is they increase the surface area of the organic matter uh, and that makes it far easier to be digested and broken down by decomposing bacteria. So you can see with this detritus here, it's, it's, it's in smaller pieces, so therefore a much greater uh, surface area uh, to allow for decomposition. Okay, so that's uh, heterotrophic uh, nutrition. Um, the next thing we're going to look at now uh, is saprophytic uh, nutrition, uh, which involves uh, fungi. Okay then, um, fungi, uh, we need to know 
uh, a little bit about the structure of fungi uh, before we look at its uh, nutrition. Um, so top row there, the first two pictures are just typical examples of mushrooms, which is a, a type of fungi. There's lots of different types of fungi. Uh, this is just one type. Um, what you see there is actually the reproductive organ uh, of the fungus. Um, this last image here on the top, that is a microscope image of a structure called hyphae. Okay, now hyphae is uh, microscopic generally, or it's underground, so you can't always see it. Um, the hyphae is what will carry out the uh, nutrition uh, of the fungus. So that's a microscope image of it. Um, basically, they're just long strands um, that uh, release digestive enzymes to uh, help uh, the fungi absorb nutrients. So there's the hyphae. Now, this diagram here um, it's just showing the, like I said, the reproductive structure um, of a mushroom, okay? And under the ground, you have these hyphae. Um, now, all of the hyphae together is known as a mycelium, all right? Uh, these myceliums often form like a very thick layer uh, under the soil, sometimes on top of the soil. Um, but they're all composed of uh, hyphae. Okay, so uh, that's the basic structure that you need to know uh, of the fungus, and it's the hyphae that uh, is the most important part for us. So this diagram here, which is in your notes, um, this is how uh, fungi carry out uh, what's known as sapro saprophytic uh, nutrition. Um, from the hyphae um, is released enzymes. So uh, because the enzymes are used outside of the hyphae, they're known as uh, extracellular. And because they will digest uh, fats, proteins and carbohydrates, it's known as extracellular digestion. So once the uh, enzymes have digested all of those products into small soluble substances, okay, so the list here are just the monomers that make up uh, fats, proteins and carbohydrates. Um, so these soluble substances are then reabsorbed back into the hyphae um, that then can be used by the fungus for, for various uh, processes. Okay, now the bottom diagram is of rotting fruit there. Now this is what fungi do. Um, the enzymes start digesting the organic matter in this fruit and then it goes all soft and squidgy. Um, and that is because of this extracellular digestion that's occurring. Okay, so you do need to know uh, this diagram here and obviously the structure of hyphae as well uh, is important. Um, saprophytic feeders fungi are really important again in the recycling of organic matter within the uh, environment. Okay, they're very important decomposers, actually. Okay, so that's the saprophytic feeders done and heterotrophic nutrition done. Um, the next part and the last part of this video is to look at some basic um, organisms and what type of digestive or guts uh, they have. So we're going to have a sort of comparison um, of gut structures in different organisms. Okay, uh, we're looking at slide uh, 10 now. Um, so what you can see here uh, is an organism known as Hydra. Um, it's a simple aquatic organism 
that has uh, what's known as a simple tube get with no specialized regions okay so um, the first image here uh, is of a real uh, Hydra okay um, let's get my pen all right which is that one there um, so simple organism uh, next to it is a diagram of it uh, so if we stick to, to this second diagram, uh, all it has here are tentacles, okay, that surround uh, a mouth region here, which also acts as a kind of an anus as well, because as well as food molecules coming in, uh, waste products uh, come out. So that's an important feature of Hydra uh, that you need to make a note of. Um, if we look inside it, you can see it is tube-like and this region here is known as the gastrovascular cavity um, and this is where the hydra will digest um, the food particles it takes in via the mouth. So you can see there, there's no specialised region. It, it, it hasn't got a stomach, it hasn't got a colon. Uh, small intestine it's got nothing and that's why it's known as a simple tube gut with no specialized uh, regions however it does need uh, to digest um, the food that it consumes so if we look at this image here uh, number three um, it has a layer of cells called the gastrodermis Okay, so um, the outside is the epidermis bit and then it goes inwards to the gastrodermis. Now, that is a layer of cells um, that can actually release uh, enzymes. Okay, so uh, because these enzymes are released into the gastrovascular cavity, so the enzymes come out like that. Uh, it's another type of extracellular digestion, just like um, that we discussed earlier. Um, so that's diagram three, just to show this gastrodermis. Um, diagram four here, um, it's a highlighted view of the gastrodermis, which is in pink. Okay, and what you can see here is enzymes being released. Okay, now they're going to be released by exocytosis. Okay, this region here is the gastrovascular cavity. So the food is being digested uh, into smaller pieces, which are then taken up by the cells of the gastrodermis again and the food particles are in vacuoles okay uh, you know membrane bound structures and the completion of the digestion occurs within these vacuoles so here would be intracellular digestion So that's the basic outline of what happens in Hydra. Uh, you do need to make a note of this uh, passage here, which gives the brief description uh, that I've just told you about how food is digested. So that's uh, one example of a simple uh, tube get. Um, there is another example. Uh, it's not in the notes, but uh, it's just sponges. Okay, they also have simple two gets with no specialised regions. I'm not going to go through the details of this one, but it's just another uh, example. Okay, uh, we're on slide, uh, slide 13 now. This is the last uh, slide. Uh, we're going to look at a two gut with specialised regions um, in an insect and an earthworm. Okay, so um, we'll start with the insect first. You can see 
um, that it is more complex than the Hydra. Okay, uh, it has a mouth to start with, and it has a separate uh, anus. Okay, so that was in contrast to the to the Hydra, which only had a mouth and an anus that acted together. So. Um, the parts of the insect digestive system then uh, the first part here is the esophagus okay um, and right next to it is something called the crop now you should make a note of this uh, a crop is just a region of the esophagus um, in which food is stored so it is classed as a specialised region. Okay. So the next one, there would be uh, the midgut or the stomach, which would carry out uh, the digestion of food. Um, then it goes into the uh, intestines. Here, a colon, which is the large intestine, rectum, and then anus. Now you don't need to know about the Malpighian tubules, they're not part of the digestive system. Okay, so it's got the basic parts uh, that a human has, uh, except it's got a crop, which a human doesn't. Uh, it also has salivary glands as well um, to aid digestion. Okay, so that's the um, insect or general insect digestive system it's still a tube gut but it has those specialized regions the diagram on the right here is just another uh, diagram um, of the one on the left okay uh, this diagram though um, divides the digestive system up into the foregut which is the first the midgut which is the middle and then the hind gut, which is the, the end. Okay, so that's the um, insect. Underneath it then is the earthworm. Okay, so the earthworm, again, is similar to the, to the insect really. It's got a mouth. Um, this time it's got a pharynx, uh, which is like a throat. It's got an esophagus. Um, it's got this crop again, but it also has an additional structure known as a gizzard. Okay, now gizzards are found in a variety of organisms, birds, crocodiles. Um, what it does is that it's a region where the food is ground down. Okay, now I don't think earthworms do this, but I know birds do. They actually swallow stones that stay in the gizzard and the stones help grind uh, any food down. But I don't know whether earthworms actually swallow stones, but they certainly have a gizzard which is there to grind food down. Uh, the diagram on the right is just um, a, a side view really of the digestive system. Okay, there's the mouth, um, pharynx, throat, Okay, uh, there's the esophagus there, the crop, the gizzard, okay, and then the uh, the rest of the intestines, okay. So there's two, um, two guts with specialised regions, just in general, you don't need to know any more than that. Um, obviously it's the human digestive system you need to know a lot about and that will be covered uh, in class. So that is the uh, video. Okay, so um, you should have completed uh, all of the workbook uh, with notes um, and definitions from this uh, video uh, as well. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, video tutorial.